Hey, thanks for coming. One of the things that's made me decide to make a video today is to answer a couple of questions that someone sent. But let me start out by apologizing to a certain group of people. I just realized a short time ago, days, that I was trying to emulate other spiritual teachers on the web or just in general spiritual teachers. And what I realized was they are trying to convince you to take up the state of self-realization by talking about how you can become something. Now, one of the things I've realized is that you really can't make someone become something they don't want to do. So that the uh, and I realized that in my doing that, emulating these people, that I was shortchanging another group of people. That group of people are looking for the state of self-realization. So when I talk about all oh, you can do, oh, you can get all these things and all that, I'm really shortchanging them. And this letter this lady wrote kind of made me realize that on another level. So, uh, again, I apologize for having misunderstood what I should be doing. And really the state of self-realization is always about the present moment. And so I thought, okay, well if this is, if you are that particular person that's looking for the state of self-realization, one of the things that will encourage you to go towards that is to understand how a person who has that state feels. I remember before I became realized wondering what it must be like to be realized what goes through their mind. Okay, so in order for you to tell you what's going through my mind that I'm a realized being, I have to make that statement, shouldn't I? And this reminds me of the story that Shiva, they tell about Shiva, Swami Shivananda, my great guru. that somebody, a donor, wrote to him and complained about all the pictures Swami Shivananda had taken with him. And that he, if he was really a less egotistical person, he wouldn't have so many pictures taken. And Swami Shivananda took the time to write him back. You know, realized beings' actions act on many levels. I sometimes talk about the ABCs. So even though this talk is to the people that are really looking for the state of self-realization, it's also to this lady. 
And the order in which I'm doing it is I'm going to talk about self-realization and then how her other questions which deal with Trotic and reframing come into it in a separate video. So I won't dis disturb you too many, too much by my ABCs operating all at the same time. Okay, so to back to the story about Shivananda. Shivananda wrote back and said, I noticed that when people had pictures taken, okay, of me with them, that they intensified their spiritual practice. And he didn't say this, but my interpolation is, okay, I have a choice when people ask me to take my photos. Can, should I refrain from doing that to show, so he asked a question this guy asked him. He asked him himself that. And he realized he would rather have those people make more spiritual progress than for him to have the appearance of having a, a, no ego. In other words, he was so concerned with their, the effect that he didn't care that people would mistake and say that he was more egotistical, like that guy did. So, in order to tell you what a spiritual person, a realized spiritual person does, I have to say I'm realized. But I'm willing to have you think that I'm not. If you only will, somebody else, if not yourself, actually gets this message. So, what a spiritual realized being is always thinking about is how he can help people better. And it doesn't matter whether he's successful or not. It only matters that he be doing that. Like this lady, uh, in her fifth question, I find that my third eye feels like something is happening there as well as my base chakra, especially when meditating. However, when I'm doing the who am I questioning, she's talking about Ramana Maharshi here, in bringing myself back to a more peaceful state during the day, energy seems to automatically go to my heart chakra. Which chakra should I concentrate my energy on? Well, concentrating on any of the chakras is useful. In You will do that until you feel you need to move on, in that case. But I would tell you, okay, that I'm sitting here breathing, and the energy is going up and down, up and down, so that the There is that state of the passage of the energy. See, there's a saying that when you're doing mantras, okay, that the uh, first you do the mantra, and then the mantra does you. Okay, that's the case here. First you do the energy, and then the energy does you. So 
the seed of self-realization is that somehow you're always thinking about God. So, and so how does this tie in to what you can know? Okay, see, so the, the real problem is, okay, only another realized person knows it's another realized person. Okay, and that's because everybody that's listening here is already realized. When a person goes into the state of samadhi, what they'd say when they come back, oh, it's always been here. It's like the sun behind the clouds. Eventually, the clouds dissipate and the sun shines in its original state. There's no need to go somewhere to get the state of samadhi. It's always here. Okay, so when the sun shines, then the energy is moving in the body all the time. So while I'm talking to you and saying these words and cogitating and looking how to fit this all together, the energy is going on. So to this lady, what I'm saying is when you're feeling that energy, what you want to do is maximize it. One of my students, Mike, called me up one day and said, Oh, I went into the state of Samadhi yesterday. Really? And what I realized, he said, that it's always been there. See? Is there an echo? Okay. So now every day he's doing exactly what it says in the Bible, Paul says in the Bible, I die daily. You go into that place where there is no mind, there is no thought. Okay. And when you come out of that, your change. Now, Samadhi is only half the story. Once you acquire the state of Samadhi, then you go on and you want to, okay, so if you, I'm going to point out, okay, here is a book. The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, there's my guru, Swami Satchanananda, up in Rishikesh, next to the Ganges. Okay. This is the commentary, the edited path of yoga, compiled by Patanjali. The third chapter deals with the state of samadhi itself. Okay. And it tells you first how to get into the state of samadhi. In the ver and so this is in the third chapter, the portion on accomplishments. Okay, third chapter. And it's talking about, of the eight limbs of yoga, the three most important, three most important. Dharna is the binding of the mind to one place, object, or idea. So there's one. Dharna is actually, can be loosely be translated as concentration. Dhyana 
is the continuous flow of cognition towards that object. And I'll talk about trotic as that. Okay, so Diana is actually meditation proper. And and the third statement is, Samadhi is the same meditation when there is a shining of the object alone, as if devoid of form. Okay? So there's the three limbs of yoga in the third chapter starting. Okay, so, and then later, okay, so this is to give you some idea most meditation groups, they see samadhi as the end result. And that's not true. It's about halfway there. And I give you some idea, Ramakrishna, a great Bengal saint, said, spiritual life begins after Samadhi. Okay. Well, I don't want to take too much of your time. Okay. Part of this process of going towards self-realization always awakens the energy. So in the third chapter it's talking about how you can use that inner energy, that flow of that energy to get or do things. Walk on water, fly through the air, disappear in crowds. You may have heard of somebody that was able to do that. Okay. So once you learn and have these accomplishments, then you go on. One of the, one of the last statements in the third chapter that Patanjali says is, "Don't get caught in the cities." Okay. So if you have spiritual teachers, okay, that awaken this power, you can always tell it, okay, just by near, being near them because that energy creates an environment around a person. When the energy is circulating, it has to circulate. It not only circulates in the body, it circulates out. The, and this is part of the process of becoming aware of that connection to the whole universe. So what happens is, you think you're a human being. Then you feel the energy, and then you feel that you're a human being with energy. And then you continue. And you see, oh, the energy is outside me and it can do things. So therefore, in some important, intimate way, you are the thing you're affecting. Oh. Then comes a subtle shift. Oh, I am this collection of things of which the body is part of that. Oh, you go from being connected to the outside to being the outside connected to the inside. A big difference.
Okay, so then this is the reason why you make the energy go up. But along with the energy going up, all the chakras get awakened. You know, when you, uh, so you're looking at, the, you're watching the chakras as the kundalini rises and goes from chakra to chakra. If you watch the petals of the chakra, which are related to the, the Sanskrit lettering, whole other subject. Okay. The petals which are pointing down as the as the kundalini goes to a chakra, it fills it with energy and it starts to spin. The petals which are pointing down straighten out and become active. Okay. Then it, the kundalini goes to the next chakra, same thing happens. But on the chakra below, the petals which were straight now point up. They're following the kundalini itself. So here is the reason that the Patanjali Yoga Sutras, all the yoga teachers talk about the yamas and the niyamas, the, the equivalent to the Ten Commandments, all this. Because when the chakra gets activated, the issues with that chakra get activated too. The negative karma that's stored in those areas becomes active. So does the good karma. But this arousal can lead you down paths that you don't want to go and take you away from the self realize the goal of self realization. Okay. Everybody has to go through them. Okay, so it's almost proverbial that Christian ministers somehow become involved with sex scandals. Jimmy Swagger says, oh, I'm a sinner. Well, if you're a sinner, the only way you can really prove it is by sinning. So they do. By the way, Christ never said anybody was sinners. That was Paul. And I've chastised him about that. Okay. So, this is why Swami Nityananda was caught with an actress. Okay. Was it really that bad that he was having sex with her? Not really. It was it was only he wasn't keeping his promise to be monogamous, to be alone with the swell self. That's what Swami means. Okay. But that's also why Bill Clinton, okay? He has an awakening of the Kundalini, no doubt. So, it, so it's not just spiritual people, it's everybody. You awaken that energy, the tests will come all the time. This lady was talking about uh, Uh, her last question, when I had something happen with Kundalini a couple of years back, I was in meditation and was unable to move my body. Okay, so this is really a type of lucid dreaming she was having. 
It was very strange and I knew what was going on. But I was awake but unable to move at all. This is because she had become disconnected from the mind that controls the body. I had this very hot but very pleasant energy pulsing upwards through my body. This is the Kundalini sign. It stopped at my solar plexus center where I had this very sudden ter terrible fear that something really awful was going to happen. Okay? Yeah, this is, this was that negative karma being activated. I immediately pulled myself out of my meditative state. I was just reading something about the Indian guru Ramana. She's talking about Ramana Maharshi. And he had a terrible fear that he was going to die. Okay, so this also was the same thing happening to him. And worked through it and became enlightened. Do you think this was the same sort of thing that was happening to me or not? Well, yeah. If it happens again, do you think I should try to stick with the meditation and see it through and work through the fear? Okay. There are protection mantras you can use, okay, for things like this. You, This will come up every time you do this until you go through it. So the thing to do, so I would say the fear was reasonable because you don't know. And we'll talk about that later. Okay. Um, but I wanted you to know. Okay. So let me go back and just go over something with you. The, the ego in a, is still here with a realized person. You have to have a desire for something. Otherwise, you're going to leave the planet. You have to desire to eat and do all these other things that make it possible for you to be here. So, but let me ask you my question. I'm talking to you about self-realization. Okay. After I talked and said I had this state, have I talked about myself? I don't think so. Being in this state means that you are in the flow, and the flow is everything. And yes, you can see this lady has had a touch of this. It's only necessary just to continue to make it stronger, more continuous, and make it go up and come down. Okay, they don't tell you that in many places. The kundalini goes up, you go into samadhi, and then the, then the kundalini comes back down, but it's transformed. Okay, so I trust that this has been helpful for you. I will go on to the next video, and if those that wish can come, can come along, we'll talk about trotic and uh, concentration and how those lead to these other state these other states of uh, dharana or concentration and then lead on to samadhi thank you so much for coming i trust that you got something out of this thank you